say that I hate this. I hate every minute of this. Oh my god. Hey guys, what's up? It's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the start of a new reading vlog. This is Ashley from the future as I have already finished reading this bad boy. So you guys can follow along with my reading journey. Throughout the vlog, I will not talk about spoilers. The only spoilers in here are things that you should already know going in. So if you've read Binding and Keeping 13 and Saving Six, you should be good. I'm also going to add a time stamp in the box below because towards the end of the video, I am gonna go in depth more with spoilers and really talk about the context of this book. So when I get to that point, I will warn you and you can click out of this video if you have not read this book yet. But if you have read Binding, Keeping, and Saving, and you would like to follow along with me on this read, then just keep watching. Okay, it is Thursday night and Redeeming Six has officially dropped on my Kindle at 9.03 p.m. because I live on the west coast so that is one of the perks to that is that I don't have to stay up till midnight to get releases like that so I have downloaded it I have started it and I am about 15% in and this is a crazy ride you guys like this is a lot of pain which I knew was gonna happen but it's just a lot right off the bat that this book doesn't have chapters it has parts but like there are chapters they're just not with a number or anything on it but um I think when I looked ahead on the contents I think there's like t nine ten parts or something like that so I am up to part two and I have to say from what I've read so far very interesting stuff. So first of all, I want to touch on the light stuff that's like keeping me really giddy and excited. Okay, I don't know who is driving a motorcycle at 11.30 at night, but that's really rude. Anyway, right off the bat in part one, we are still on Christmas break 2004. This is right before Shannon's going to go to Tommen, like a week or two later. Joey finds himself at a party thrown by Huey and Claire. Joey, like, I, I'm not spoiling anything. I promise this is not big to the plot or anything, but I'm starting to see who these other books could be about because from reading B13 and K13, you really only f know that you're gonna get Joey and Aoife and Claire and Gibsey. It's like kind of an obvious, but like the rest of the characters, it's kind of a big question mark. And at this party, Joey kind of witnesses this interaction between Huey and Lizzie and you guys, I think there's some things that we don't know about. Now I know from K-13, Shannon references a lot that something is going on with Lizzie but she doesn't want to push it or anything and I think it has to do with Huey. So that's really interesting. I'm super excited about that. Um, obviously we're getting way more of the Tommen characters in this book. We got a teaser to Gibsy and Johnny in Saving Six, but that was it. But in this one, uh, so far in just the first few chapters, we've got Gibsy, we've got Huey, we've got Feely, we've got Claire, we've got Lizzie. Like these characters are coming in hot and I am here for the found family and I'm here for all of it. Um, but now let's touch on the pain. So right off the bat, we pick up where Saving Six left off and obviously Joey and Aoife are not in a good place. They are never gonna stop loving each other, but Aoife's just at a point where she can't do it with his addictions anymore. It's just really heartbreaking to see how they have this pull to each other, but they just don't wanna hurt each other. I don't know, it's just, it's, it's hard stuff. So um, I am through part two, so here's the deal. I am not going to talk spoilers. Anything that I mention in this vlog, I feel is obvious knowledge. Either you have read the first three books, you've seen the damn cover to this book. Obviously, Aoife is pregnant in this book, okay? It's, it's not a spoiler. The cover, hello, there's a very visible baby bump here. So 
what's really interesting is we're starting to figure out the timeline of this pregnancy because it's not she's not pregnant in saving six at all and before i had read saving six i was kind of wondering how this was going to come about because in b13 and k13 it is never like specified that she is pregnant there are these very micro clues within there like i think joey has some kind of line when they're like in a fight like in that big gang fight with the kids of tommen and run down on bella and stuff i think joey says something about like be careful what about that and cuts him off and then um when joey was coming down from a high i remember um shannon talking about how he was laying in Eva's lap and he was just like clutching her stomach really hard so there are these very very subtle clues but it's just never actually confirmed and so before saving six came out i was wondering how this pregnancy was going to be brought up i was wondering what the timeline of it all was and now obviously we're getting that so she basically gets pregnant at the beginning of redeeming six and so in part two the part two that i just finished is her kind of starting to realize this so i have started part three and um i i don't know if this is gonna happen but i i'm sensing it but i'm hoping i'm wrong but i just have this feeling that Aoife's gonna keep it from joey as long as she can because she's afraid that it's gonna break his sobriety and I hope that doesn't happen. I mean, obviously we know from K-13 that Joey's sobriety is going to get broken. We just don't know what the exact trigger moment was. So I'm going to keep reading and I will update you guys probably tomorrow. Okay, it is now Friday after work. Uh, it's been a very long day at school. I'm ready for spring break. So if I look a little hood rat today that's why um so i actually got a good chunk of reading done in school today um just during my prep time and stuff like that um i did make it through the end of part four so things are definitely starting to like the plot is definitely starting to push forward you are really starting to see where these events are lining up in sync with uh b13 and k13 and I think in my check-in last night, I was mentioning how Aoife knows she's pregnant now, but I was really worried that she was going to keep it Joey from Joey for a long time. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but I will say Joey knows now, and it's a very interesting way that he finds out. Um, I will also say that, you know, obviously through reading these books, Joey's family like minus the siblings, they suck. His parents absolutely suck. But you know what? Aoife's family, her brother sucks, okay? He was not the nicest in Saving Six. And you know what? In Redeeming Six, he has not redeemed himself, okay? I don't like him. I said, I just finished part four and Aoife and Joey are going to have quite the battle ahead of themselves now that people know about this pregnancy. Um, obviously, you know, in 2023, People don't handle teen pregnancies very well, but this is in 2005 and it's really not handled well. So it's just going to be very interesting to see how these events move forward. Bifa keeps mentioning that they're going to be getting out of school soon for Easter holiday. And we all know what that means from reading B13. So that is the weekend that all of that stuff is gonna go down where teddy lynch beats the ever living crap out of shannon and uh yeah so we're going to be getting that very very soon i anticipate it in the next several chapters just because we're getting right there so i'm gonna keep reading but uh i anticipate the tears are going to start falling very very soon just because these are scenes that I have been anticipating for months in Joey's perspective and now it's finally here and I'm about to get them. So I'm going to make myself cozy for the rest of the night, see how much I can read and see how my emotions do. Just popping on here to say that I hate this. I hate every minute of this. Oh my god. Okay, so I have just finished part six and it is when you get to 
the night that Teddy Lynch beats the ever-living crap out of Shannon for spending time in Dublin with Johnny and her friends. And I have been anticipating this scene for a long time since I knew that this book was announced. And seeing it in Joey's perspective, it was intense. And um, I think what was even more intense was the following chapter in Aoife's perspective when she arrives at the house. And she describes Joey helplessly rocking Shannon back and forth on the floor and holding her lifeless body. And I just, it's two o'clock in the morning and I cannot handle all these emotions and pain right now. So I need to take a massive break right now. We'll see when I pick this up, but I just can't right now. Okay, it is Saturday, 11.30. Um, I got quite a bit done last night. I actually got up to part seven and then I had to force myself to stop. Otherwise I knew I was probably going to stay up all night and get a lot done. And I mean what I say when I'm trying to take this slow because, you know, as opposed to saving six where we had literally a new book coming out a month later, we don't have a book announced after this one. So I'm just taking my time. Um, but like I said, I got up to part seven last night and um yeah it's it's heavy stuff so um I did get to the scene from B13 uh where you know Joey basically tells Marie him or us um the chapter is actually called him or us 2.0 and it was brutal and um uh, basically you get all the same dialogue that you got with Shannon's perspective but you get more because if you remember correctly Shannon was very in and out of it. Um, in her perspective chapter, uh, she talks about lots of muffled voices and sounds, like she thinks people are talking around her. Well, with Joey's perspective, you're getting the full picture and it's rough. And then um, I think I mentioned in my check-in last night when I was like all emotional, that the chapter afterwards is Aoife's perspective when she shows up the, at the house to take them to the hospital. And she's just describing Joey rocking Shannon on the floor holding her lifeless body and I'm just like okay here we go because I know that this is only going to be a percentage of what is more to come because we all know what else is coming and I anticipate it coming very soon because I think I'm about 58 percent into this book so we still have a little more than 40 percent to go and there's still a lot to go which I'm happy about because I want new scenes, you know, because we all know from the end of K-13 that Joey is going to end up at Tommen. And I, I just want to get to those parts. So, yeah, I'm going to keep reading. For parts five and six, obviously, you're going to get this whole showdown that happened in B-13. And um, I basically got up to the part where Darren shows up again. And he is at the hospital with Marie, and Joey is just very pissed off, as we knew he would be from B and K-13, um, saving six. Now from reading that, we know a lot of why Joey has all this resentment and hatred towards his older brother. Um, and so that is where I left off. And so it's going to be very interesting to now read these parts in Joey's perspective, because I did recently reread K-13. So it's all very, very fresh in my head, but I do remember just how much Darren really really pushed Shannon and how much he was trying to support their mother and make her priority over the kids and how Darren was helping Marie paint Johnny into be this predator type of person and so it really frustrated me with K-13 and Shannon's POV so I just know with Joey's POV it's going to be a lot more um there's going to be a lot more judgment because uh Darren already did a wise crack to Joey for becoming a father and repeating the Teddy Lynch cycle and so it's just a lot and you get a lot of these frustrations with the Lynch family and how much you just cannot stand them and it's just a lot and <laughs> I know I have said the word a lot a lot because it is um, so yeah, I'm going to keep reading, but I think I looked ahead in there 12 parts. Uh, so I am at seven now, but yeah, so I'm going to keep reading today, see how much I get done and I will give you guys some more updates.
Okay, it is Sunday about noon. I am super tired. I stayed up till about 4 a.m. last night, but you know what? That's really not abnormal for me. I pretty much stay up till 3, 4 every night, and I know that's unhealthy, but you know what? I am not willing to sacrifice time to read, so. And with a husband and two kids, the middle of the night really is my only peace and quiet to do so. Uh, so anyway, um, I didn't really read it all yesterday because, like I said, I'm trying to savor this book, and... I now have 20% left and I actually want to crawl into a hole and die. Like I really do. So um, I read part seven, eight, nine, and then the very first part of 10 last night. And oh my goodness, it was some heavy stuff. So before I touch on that, it arrived in the mail while I was at the grocery store. I'm so excited, but I'm also very pissed off because look at that. This is like the seventh package that I have gotten from Amazon since around Christmas time where the package itself is coming in already like kind of ripped open and the books inside are dent or pre-loved because they're like cracked spines and one of my books even had annotations in it. I was like, what the actual hell, Amazon? So uh, we're going to open this and I'm really hoping Joey Lynch is not damaged because if he is, I am probably going to start throwing rocks or something so let's see what we have <sighs> okay you know what i'm already not happy i don't know if you can see that but that's yeah and the spine is cracked in two places that really really pisses me off like this book is brand new this book is brand new i know no one has owned this because i literally ordered it like on the day it was out this just pisses me off. But anyway, at least I can hold Joey Lynch in my hand now. Ugh, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna call for a replacement. That just really irks me. It really does. Show books some love, people. If you're an Amazon fulfillment center and you are watching this, please show these books love when you package them. <laughs> anyway, okay, so I think where I left off with you guys yesterday was I, I said that we are up to the part of the beginning of K-13 where Shannon is hospitalized and Darren reappears. And I have to say, I still hate Darren Lynch, okay? I hated him in K-13, I hated him in Saving Six, and you know what, he is validating all of those reasons again in this book. So he was horrible to Johnny in K-13. He, I think that his holier than thou attitude when he swoops in after he ditched his family and basically tries to tell Johnny to stay away, you're no good, and how he prioritizes Marie over the kids, it just really irks me. And he's doing the same exact shit that he did to Johnny to Aoife. And he is blaming Aoife for a lot of Joey's addiction and substance abuse problems. And him and Marie are pulling this card with the baby. And it's just really, really making me want to throw things, okay? But you know what? We all know the Lynch family sucks. We really do. So um, I read a lot of heavy things last night and I got to the part where Joey enters rehab. So a lot of things happened in these parts. A lot of things that I have been wanting to see from Joey's perspective since I read K-13 and I got it all and I'm not disappointed. Let's talk the fire scene, all right? So if you've not read K-13 and you don't wanna be spoiled, click away. So obviously in Keeping 13, the family Lynch drama basically comes to an end when Teddy Lynch decides to light the house on fire with him, Marie, and all the kids inside. And unbeknownst to Teddy, Johnny is able to sneak Shannon and the three younger kids out. Joey had been out because he had gotten into a fight with Marie and Darren prior, and Darren had left to go out looking for them. And Shannon got locked in the house with the boys, and she was really scared, and Johnny came, and he rescued all of them and took them out. And in K-13, you have this scene in Johnny's perspective of when Joey arrives at the house, and I knew that when we got Joey's perspective, it was going to be hard. But you guys, be prepared for a lot. Uh, just know that. Be prepared to feel a lot of things. And just be prepared that you may need to close the book and take a breather after that. 
You guys will know that from reading K-13 that we're getting all of this again, but in a new character's perspective. And it's very fascinating and I applaud Chloe Walsh that she's able to write the same story, but from different perspectives. So you actually get different stories. Cause I'll be honest, I don't like a lot of retellings, but this you're getting the same conversations. Like you're getting word for word, the same stuff, but it's different. I just don't know how to explain it. Um, but you know, some other light touching stuff. I want to talk about Mama Cavanaugh. Now, also, if you know from K-13, Johnny's mom really develops some feelings and attachment to Joey. She really, really wants to take care of him. And uh, you get to have that chapter in here where Joey meets her for the first time. And that was off page in K-13. Uh, you kind of see a little bit, but you didn't see any of their scenes alone because they had this big conversation in the kitchen. And you got a lot of that. And then you also get Joey's scene with both Johnny's parents after Johnny's father gets Joey out of jail for that fight at Tommen. And it's a lot, but it was really pulling at me because Johnny's family wants him. And to feel like to be finally wanted by someone other than Aoife, it was just a lot. So like I said, I have finished the funeral scene and I read a few parts of 10 uh just when joey is in rehab for the summer um but yeah i have 20 percent left the end is near so um i am gonna actually try my hardest to not read this today maybe save it for tonight um i think what i might do actually in the meantime is i have annotations that i need to catch up on so i think i might go back and add all my annotations that i've been doing on my kindle and then also to kind of break it up a little bit, I have been kind of reading a little bit of Thrive. But then when I started reading this last night, I realized that, you know, Lilo deals with a lot of pain and substance abuse too. So this maybe wasn't the best cleanser palette, but that's just a me problem. So uh, yeah, we will uh, read some more of this. I probably, I'm, I'll try not to update you guys until the end, but if there's some really good stuff in here between that, I will probably give you more updates. Three weeks later. Yeah, I don't really know what happened. <laughs> I'm pretty positive it has been three weeks since I have checked in, read this book. Um, yeah, so basically what happened was I got to 80, 81% part 10 where Joey's in rehab. And then I got scared to finish it because the slump that this series puts me in every time I read it. And it's worse now that we have more books and just more to absorb. So I put a pause on it. And I'm glad I did because at that time, that was the only thing I wanted to read. That was the only series I wanted to touch. And since then, my mind feels more refreshed. I've read some fantasies. I've read some sports romances. So I am ready to dive back in. And I am excited because I did receive the alternate cover in the mail last week. So now I have both of these bad boys to add to my shelf. So I'm very excited. But uh, today is the last day of spring break i do have to go back to school tomorrow so my goal today is to finish this bad boy like i said i have 81 percent left and i think on my kindle it said i have just under three hours so we're gonna knock this out of the park i'm gonna have all of the tears but like i said i believe in my last check-in i said i am at the part where joey is in rehab and we all knew that that was gonna happen because that is mentioned in keeping 13 that joey goes away for the summer and so that is where I'm at. And so I'm I'm ready for all the emotions for when he comes home and joins the Kavanaugh family. So, oh, yep. So I'm going to dive back into this and then I will give you guys my final thoughts once I finish. Okay, update. I have just made it to part 12. That is the final part. And I'm just getting all of the different emotions that I want. I'm getting sadness, but I'm also getting happiness. And like I said, there's no spoilers in this vlog. Like everything, 
I'm telling you, you should like know going into this book, like it's gonna be expected. So part 10 is Joey in rehab and recovery and all of that. And part 12 or part 11 is when he comes home and the scene where he comes home to the Kavanaugh's is just like, it's just so touching and I love it. And um, you get the part, like obviously we don't get any of this in Keeping 13. It's just mentioned at the very end of the book that Joey attends Tommen and we get this whole scene of how this comes about and how this happens and like I kid you not, when John Cavanaugh was the one that brought it up, I was like kicking my feet in the air like, oh my god, it's happening. Joey's gonna go to school with all of them, but <clears throat> I'm on part 12 and part 11 just ended very interesting. So, um, I am on the final part. I have about an hour left on my Kindle, so I'm gonna keep reading and then I'm gonna cry a lot and then I will give you guys my final thoughts. Yeah, so I just finished. Oh my god. This is gonna be like my top book this year. Like, I just need to process my feelings. I will check in with my final thoughts later. All right, it is five o'clock the next day. So I have had plenty of time to really sit and think about my thoughts because with a book this thick, I have a lot of thoughts. It was quite the journey. Like I said, it took me three weeks to read this. I did start it the night it was released, like at 9 p.m. And I sped through that 80% like through the next night. And then I got so scared and I'm like, I have to put this away. I have to put this away because this is the only thing I'm thinking about right now. And if I finish this book now, nothing good is gonna come from it for me personally. So I'm really glad that I ended up taking that pause because I did read some things in between for these last three weeks and I just really think it was good for me overall just because, like I said, from the beginning of February till now, I really have had nothing but Boys of Tommen consuming my every thought because I reread Getting Ready for Saving Six and then I reread between Getting Ready for Redeeming Six and there's just something so special about the series that you just, you get sucked in, you get sucked in with the world of the characters, and you just can't get enough. And this book gave me so many emotions. It was so heartbreaking, like I said. You get pretty much all of B13 and K13, but you get it from Joey's side. And so you know a lot of the scenes before you read the book of what you're gonna get. But then there's also some new scenes that happened during that time that I had no idea about. Like for Aoife specifically, there were some not so great things that happened to her on these days that we knew what happened with Joey. If that makes sense, there was more going on if, with Aoife's side. And like I said, it was just a lot of emotions, but I loved every single minute of it. But yeah, this thick bad boy is done now. Like I said, I did not get to annotate this one like Saving Six. So when I do my reread, I am going to annotate. However, this is the small font <laughs> that binding and keeping 13 have so I'm not overly thrilled about that but you know what I'm still gonna go through the motions and annotate it it'll probably just be a little bit longer because it kind of gives me a migraine I am not gonna lie but yeah so this book obviously is an infinity star I am gonna go out there early and say you can timestamp this here that Tuesday, April 11th, I am saying that this is going to be my top book of 2023. So we'll check back next year in January. And if I was wrong, I was wrong. But I am very confident that this is hands down my top book of the year. I just, like I said, it gave me everything I wanted. And once again, I am so glad that I reread B13 and K13 right before this one because it just... 
it really gave me these fresh emotions knowing what I was coming off of. And I don't think I've mentioned in this vlog, but I think I mentioned in my March wrap up. If you are rereading this series, I highly suggest swapping your reading order and starting with Saving Six first, then do B13, then K13, and then finish with this. I think because this is a recap of B13 and K13, reading this one right after those two without doing Saving Six right before this one, like I said, I think it just gives you more fresh emotions coming off what you just did with B13 and K13. But if you're rereading and you want to do the original order to like give yourself a break from the Shannon and Johnny drama, I totally get that. But yeah, this is obviously my perfect infinity star book. Okay, so this is the portion of the vlog where I am going to talk about all the spoilers from the book. So if you have not read it yet, I would click away from this video and then come back at a later time if you want. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to get right into it. So right off the bat, this book just gave me so many giddy and excited feelings. I think I talked in the beginning of the vlog that there was some conversation going on at a party between Lizzie and Huey and Joey was just eavesdropping. So we don't have the whole story, but I can tell you the seeds are planted and I really have these speculations that Lizzie's story is going to be a love triangle just because of these little heated interactions she had with Huey. And then in Keeping 13, if you remember, there's also this moment where they're camping and she gets in a fight with Gibsy. Feely is the one that goes off and follows her. I also want to say that towards the end of this book, when they were all at Tommen at lunch, Lizzie says something, there's something that happens, and Feely basically gives her this speech about how he feels sorry for her. She's a sad girl with sad eyes. And she just gets up and walks out and Huey is the one to follow her. So I just, I have a lot of anticipation. I know so many people want Claire and Gibsy's book next, but I think just based on the conversations that are had in Chloe's Facebook group, there's very, very big Tom and fans there. So if you want to talk more with people about this book, I highly suggest joining that group. But People were really saying that, you know, Gibsy's whole thing in these books is that he wants Claire to have a life and see the world. He doesn't want to be that high school love that goes away. He wants to be that everlasting love. And so I really think Claire and Gibsy's book is going to be last just based on the conversations. And I'm okay with that. A few months ago, I wouldn't have been. I would have wanted Claire and Gibsy next just because we really haven't had a whole lot of Feely and Huey and Lizzie. But just from Redeeming Six, I am excited to see what is in store for them because I really anticipate they're just being messiness and I'm totally here for it. Let's talk about Aoife and her pregnancy. Now, obviously, we knew going into this book she was pregnant. Obviously, she's very pregnant in the cover. And I have to say, I had speculations going into this book about how it was going to be handled just because of the little snippets and teasers we would get in Keeping 13 about how it was very hinted that she was pregnant, but nobody knew about it. So I was right on the nose where really they weren't telling people about it. Their friend group knew, people at school knew. Here's the thing. I said earlier in this vlog that I absolutely hated Aoife's brother. He basically outed her to the entire school that she was pregnant. And it was Paul, her ex-boyfriend, and Danielle, the girl that Joey had been hooking up with in Saving Six, they basically decided to humiliate the two of them in class. And that is how Joey found out Aoife was pregnant, was the class talking about it. And so it was just a very, very messed up way. And uh, like I said, I just really hate the brothers in these books, except the younger brothers. The younger brothers are perfect. The twin and older brother, mm, I could do without them. But yeah, so it's very fucked up in the sense of how Joey finds out, but it is a lot of drama to keep you entertained. I will also say that I did, I think it was very on par with Aoife's character that she was not the one to figure out she was pregnant. Basically, Casey had to spell it out for her. Like, girl, you've been gaining weight. Your attitude has been all over the place. You're eating weird things. Like, Casey basically had to lay it out in front of her and Aoife was like, what? So you had 
you know, them keeping it a secret from Joey's entire family, because like I said, in Keeping 13, Shannon doesn't know about it. It's never mentioned. And what was really interesting to find out in this book was that Gibsy had actually known all along. It was easy for him to figure out. And Gibsy just has these interactions with Joey and Aoife throughout the book, which once again, just makes him this lovable teddy bear. And he's going to protect his friends and his people at all costs. And I just absolutely loved all of that. Okay, then I want to talk about the scenes that basically were do-over scenes from Keeping and Binding. And I have to say they were done so well. You get so much of the same dialogue from the conversations that we got in the previous books. But since you're getting it from another character's perspective, you just see it in such a different way. I think I mentioned earlier in this vlog about like specifically... The scene in the kitchen where Shannon gets back from Dublin and Teddy just beats the ever-living crap out of her. During her point of view, she's so in and out of it, like unconscious and everything. So in her point of view, you get a lot of muffled dialogue, like she can't understand what people are saying around her. Well, in Joey's, you get the full picture, you get the full conversation of what's been happening in this kitchen the entire time. She's just been laying there and <sighs> it is a lot. And then the fire, the fire, okay. I knew going into this, I think that the scene I was most looking forward to was when Joey arrived back at the house and Johnny had to tell him that he got the kids out because Joey was just so frantic, like, no, they're all inside. And you get this added part of where Joey goes into the house and he sees his mother's burned body and he just sees her hand laying there with her ring on and just how heartbreaking it is. And you find out from Joey's perspective that Teddy Lynch really, really was the devil through and through until the very end. It is mentioned that there was one body in the kitchen and there was another body in the living room trying to climb out the window. So basically, Teddy planned this whole thing, lit the house on fire and then panicked at the last minute and tried to escape. So I had a lot of emotions during that part specifically. I actually had to put my Kindle down for a few hours and process because obviously I knew he was the devil. I knew he was a bad guy, but I just did not know that he did that down until the very last moment. It was just, oh my god. And then we do get pretty much a very good chunk of where Joey is at rehab. I was a little nervous that I was going to find these parts boring, but I didn't. I really like the therapist. She really tackled on with his issues and the root of his problems. And I have to say once again, Darren... I get his trauma and his life, but he at the end of the day, Darren just really, really frustrates me and makes me angry. And I get how he's trying to protect Joey, but he's basically trying to make Joey forget all of his fatherhood responsibilities and take care of himself. And yes, I get that in recovery. You have to prioritize yourself, but the way that Darren just goes about it is so wrong. And so there is this part where Joey's like almost done with rehab and Darren is pushing for Joey to stay longer and Joey realizes he needs somebody in his corner to back him up so he calls Johnny's mother and that's another big thing I want to talk about is Mama Cavanaugh. We knew in Binding and Keeping 13 that she had a few scenes with Joey off page and we were very curious about it and i have to say every time she interacted with joey i was crying i was crying tears of like happiness i was also crying tears of sadness because like this is the mother that he's deserved his entire life and she has this one part it's um it's with the night he gets arrested it's the night of the fire before the fire happens and she and John are basically telling Joey the plan that they want to foster all the kids and she says I want you too but I think I want you the most and it just it really got me so in uh rehab he does call her and she and John they come in and they save the day and um this is how Tommen comes into play for Joey. Darren's whole worry about Joey getting out of rehab early is that he has nothing to focus on, nothing to fall back on. And so John Cavanaugh says, great, Joey can go to Tommen and he can finish his six year, get his leaving cert and have something to focus on. And that is how Joey ends up going to Tommen. And it just, how it all clicks into place is absolutely beautiful. Joey's homecoming when he gets home from rehab, just all the tears, 
all the feels, all the happiness. And then of course, you know, they get home and Aoife has baby AJ, Anthony, Joseph. So I absolutely love that. I will say before going into this book, for some reason, I was so dead set that they were going to have a girl. I don't know why, just because I feel like Joey would make this amazing girl dad. But I get why Chloe wrote that he had to have a boy because Joey just had all this fear of repeating his father's mistakes. And so it just makes sense. And I love it. And I have to say the way that this book ended, I guessed something before picking this book up. I, I had a hunch. And the fact that I was right, I was kind of like patting myself on the back. So... The Kavanaugh's are wealthy, right? Well, they ended up putting this annex, like this guest house on their property. It is a fully equipped apartment. Well, that is for Joey and Aoife to live in with baby AJ. And my favorite part, to end the book, I have to say, I did not see this part coming at all. Never in a million years would I have guessed this. So, because of all the stress in Aoife's life, at the end of her last year of school, she ended up failing her leaving cert. And so her parents are telling her that she needs to go back to school, but should she go back to BCS alone? No. So to make a long story short, if you've read it, you will know that at the end of the book, Joey receives a sum of money from his nanny. Nanny is the great grandma that took care of all the kids growing up and she and Joey's great grandfather, they always had a soft spot for Joey. And so they left him all of this cash and they never wanted to give it to him until he was finally out from under his father's roof because Joey had a tendency that every time he had money, he gave it to his mom and then his mom would give it to his dad and they didn't want that. So they gave him like $15,000. And with that money, Joey paid for Aoife's education for a year at Tommen. So when we go into the next book, Joey and Aoife are now students at Tommen. And I have to say, when that all unfolded, the happiness that I got, the, I was kicking my legs up in the air. I, this is something I did not see coming. I, like, yeah, it sucks you have to, like, repeat your senior year. But you know what, girl? You're joining the Tom and Kids. You're joining this found family group. And I am just so for it. So I am so excited for the future. I am so excited to see what we have in store. I do know that Chloe has already teased that the next book will be announced this year. So hopefully not too long of a wait. But we shall see. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for sticking with me through this three-week reading vlog of my favorite series of all time. I hope that you guys enjoyed reading Redeeming Six. If you have read all four books in the series, drop a comment down below what your favorite book is. Let me know who your favorite couple is. Let me know who your favorite Tom and Boy is. And let me know whose book you are most excited for next, because just with all the seats planted with all the other characters, I just anticipate so much fun to come. But anyways, as always, don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!